So I haven't had a chance to do this in a long, long time. Sorry guys, I just didn't have time to make vids. But here we go, we're gonna get back into this. So one of these patterns that appears a lot in coding interviews is the cycle sort. And this is actually not taught at all in most of the algorithm classes in college. At least I wasn't taught about this. But essentially is that what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to create cycles in the array and then we're gonna try to swap them from the cycles into their corresponding proper position. Okay, so that's legit how it is. Um, it is optimal in the number of memory writes. So like writing down the certain memory, like doing the number of swaps, that's optional. So that's the good part about it. But it is unstable. Okay, so it's unstable. So that's the bad part about this sort. And surprisingly, this is not taught at all in school, but that's the good part about it is that now we can learn it more when we do coding interviews. But yeah, when we say unstable, it means like, let's say we had two, two, right? The, the first two is not gonna be at the right spot that many a number of times, okay? So it might be on the second spot when you sort it again, right? So that's what it means by it's unstable. Now let's uh, get into how this works. All right guys, so let's go over this problem. Missing number. So given an array numbers n containing n distinct numbers from zero to n, we need to return only the number that is missing from the array. So when you see this 301, right? This array of 301, uh, the number two is missing from this array, right? Zero, one, two. That's missing from this array. So in this case, we're gonna output two because it's missing from this array. Right, we're, we're given an array of numbers containing values from zero to n, and we need to return the value that is missing from the array. So yeah, here. And here, n is equal to three because there are three numbers, so all numbers are in the range of zero to three, but two is missing in the range from zero to three, so therefore, it does not appear in here, so we're gonna return two, okay? Now let's look at this one. All right, numbers, zero, one. All right, so here in this case, example two, is that n is equal to two because there's two out numbers. There's two numbers here, right? Zero and one, there's two numbers, and we need to find the missing number in the array of zero up to two. So now in this case, two is missing in this array because since there's two numbers, all the numbers are in the range of zero to two, but there is no two in this array, right? There's no two in nums. So therefore, two is a missing number since it does not appear in nums, okay? So that's example two. And example three, now if we were to list all the numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, we're missing eight, okay, right? These numbers, nine, six, four, two, three, five, seven, zero, one, right? Out of these numbers that are from the range zero to nine, we are missing eight, okay? If we were to list them out from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, not 10, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we're missing eight, okay? The values from zero to n here in this array, we are missing eight, okay? So yeah, since there are nine numbers and they're all in the range from zero to nine, eight is missing in this nums, okay? In the range, so it does not appear in here. Number eight does not appear in here. Therefore, it is missing, so we return it. Okay, so that's the gist of this question. So now, um, how do we just solve this problem, okay? So going back to the coding interview pattern, okay? In the cyclic sort, what we're doing is we're gonna try to put the number zero at the index zero, then we place the number one at index one, and so on and so forth, okay? So since all the numbers are unique, if we place each number at the corresponding index in the array, we'll be able to find the proper way and find the index that does not have the right number, okay? So in this case, let's say we have the array of zero, uh, this array, four, zero, three, one, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna place the number four at its corresponding spot of four, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. But in this case, we're gonna ignore the number n, the last number n, because we can't place in the array, okay? So in this case, we have number uh, n numbers, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, right? Um, we can't place the last number in the array otherwise, so we're just gonna ignore it, okay? So in, like, you know how in our previous examples here, right, we have zero, one, two, three, this three, um, that has to be at the end if we were to end up sorting it, but we're gonna not, uh, we're gonna have to ignore it for now because this is the largest number, right? So yeah, okay, so since the array starts with n numbers, um, the numbers go from zero to n minus one, 
So in this case, there's four numbers, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. So we go up to um, zero to three, okay? So those are the numbers we're gonna try to look, put them in the right spot, zero, one, two, and three. Okay, we're gonna ignore the last number four because technically we can't even put it at the right spot in this array. Anyway, so yeah, so here where we start out is four is a, the number n, so we're just gonna ignore it, right? It doesn't go belong in the uh, array, right? Because we're, we're gonna ignore it. Uh, it's gonna be in the last position, right? So we're just gonna ignore it for now, okay? Now we get to the number zero, okay? Zero, what, what is zero? We need to put zero at the proper location of zero, of the index zero. So what do we do? We swap it with the whatever is at the zeroth index. Okay, so we are, we're at zero, we're gonna swap it with whatever at zero. So now this zero is at the right spot. Zero is now at the zeroth index. You see this? So therefore this is zero is at the right spot. Okay, now we can go to the next one, okay? So now zero is at the right spot at the zeroth index. So now four is the number n, we're gonna ignore it. Okay, we're gonna ignore four for now because the last four is gonna be the last number, it's the largest one, so it's gonna, we're gonna ignore it, okay? Now, now we're at three. Three is not in the right spot, right? Three, three is at index zero, one, two right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap three with the actual number at the third index. So what is the third index? Zero, one, two, three, right? So here we're gonna swap three with the third index of whatever is at the third index. So in this case, um, one is at the third index, so we're gonna swap with three with one, okay? So now three is in the proper position, right? So now we have zero, four, one, and three. So three is in the proper position, okay? So now we're gonna go back, we're gonna come back here, and now we see that one is not in the right spot. So we have zero, one, two, three. I was looking through it, one is not in the right spot, so we're gonna have uh, this one here. It needs to go in the position of the index one. Right, so we have zero, one. So this one, this this one at the second part here has to be at the position of the index one. And since this one is not in the index one, we're gonna swap it with whatever is at index one. So in this case, one is gonna get swapped with four because four is at index one. So now one is at the right spot. So now we have zero, one, four, and three. So now, um, now the number four is at n, right? And we're just gonna ignore it. So now we have zero, one, four, and three. And we know three is at the right spot. And we know one is at the right spot and we know zero is at the right spot. So only four is not at the right spot. So as we're iterating through the array, we could just find out which index is not equal to the uh, current number, uh, whatever number at the position. And then that'll just be the run that's not in the right spot. And then we just return that. So here's the code how to do it. Okay, so we start with this missing number in here. Okay, our index starts at zero. While our starting value is less than our total number of elements, we're gonna loop through from, uh, we're gonna get a cur current number, right? A current number for starting it. And if it's less than the uh, number of elements, right? And it's not equal to it, um, what we're gonna do here is this Python thing is gonna swap it. So we're gonna swap it at the corresponding positions and then we're gonna increment our index. That's what we're doing, okay? So this is gonna just swap it in place with uh, whichever value that is not at the right spot. And in the end, um, all the values that are not at the right spot will be at the right spot besides one, right? Because we're gonna find the one missing number. So in the end, there's gonna be one missing number that is not at the right spot, okay? And then after that, well, all we do is we're gonna loop through from the beginning to the end. And we're gonna, if it's not equal to the number at the right spot, if our current index is not equal to the current in, uh, current number, then we're just going to return it, right? We're going to return it, and then that's it, right? In the end, we're just going to return uh, the length, the numbers, if everything is at the right spot, right? If all the numbers are at the right spot, we're just going to return that, okay? So yeah, this is a time complexity is O of n plus O of n minus one, which is O of n, and this runs in constant space. So um, how do we identify this? Anything with dealing with duplicates or in a range, uh, you could probably use cyclic sort. So if you're trying to find anything, numbers in a given range, cyclic sort is the way to go, okay? So let's go over some more problems now. All right, guys, we're gonna do another problem. Find all duplicates in an array. Given an ar integer array of numbers length n, where all the integers of the numbers are in the range one to n. Each number appears once or twice. 
return an array of all the numbers that appear twice. Okay? So we need to return all the numbers that appear twice. We know that each number appears once or twice. Okay, so how do we know that this is a uh, cyclic sort? Because we know that all the numbers here are in the range between 1 to n. If this case was never the case, don't think about using cyclic sort. Because you cannot sort it in the right position if, there, if not all the numbers are between 1 and n. You're going to get an index out of bounds. Okay? So the only reason why this cyclic sort works is because we know given a fact, the precondition, all the numbers in numbers in this array are between 1 to n. Okay, given an array of length n, all the numbers are appear between 1 to n. That is the only reason why we could do this, okay? So don't think that you could use cyclic sort every time. The only reason why is because of this precondition, okay? So now, let's look at this. We need to find the number, return all the array of numbers that appear twice. So here, look at nums, okay? Let's look at nums. Nums, we have a value of values of all these values. All these values here, right? 4, 3, 2, 7, 8, 2, 3, 1. Which numbers appear twice? 2. 2 appears twice. Look, we have 1, 2, and another 2. 2 appears twice. That's going to be in our array. What about 3? Three? 3. Look at 3. 3 and 3. 3 appears twice. We see this 1, 3, and we see another 3. That has to be in our array. What about 4? Four? 4 only appears once. What about five? There is no five. What about six? There's no six. What about seven? Seven only appears once. What about eight? Eight only appears once. What about one? One only appears once. So the only two numbers that appear twice are two and three. So we're going to return two and three. Okay? Simple. Example two. Numbers are between one, one, two. Okay? This array of numbers, one, one, two. Which number appears twice? One! It appears twice. Why? Because one, there's one, one here, and there's another one here. Appears twice. We return one. But what about two? Two only appears once. So we can't just add, return it because two has to appear twice. We need the array of numbers that appear twice. And because one only appears twice, we're going to return one. What about this? Nums is one. No number appears twice. Do you see any number here that appears twice? None. We return empty. So that is how this problem works. That is this problem. Now let's go over the solution. Now I personally didn't use uh, in uh, cyclic sort, but if you use cyclic sort, it is much, much easier. So let's actually go over cyclic sort. Okay, so here, this is a Java solution, but bear with me. This swap, Function swap just swaps it at the corresponding spot. So if if the index at um, index i is going to get swapped with the corresponding right position. All right, so temperature variable is going to equal to i. Uh, our current number's i is going to equal to whatever our new number, and then our current number uh, new number at that position at i is going to equal to the temporary. So this swap just swaps it at the right spot. Okay, so that's this this helper function. But the beer the the main gist of the problem here is find duplicates. So here, what do we do? We start at the beginning, zero. And we're gonna loop to the end, okay? And this is at the last value of our array. So here, the index, what is the index? We need to take the current number and we minus one, okay? So it, let's say we have at like um, three, right? Let's say our number is three. What do we do? We're gonna swap three with the at whatever corresponding spot of three, but whatever value at the three is gonna be at index two, right? So that's why we have this thing. We're gonna take the number at, at i of minus one. If this number is not at the right spot, we swap with it. Then we increment i plus plus, okay? So this loop is gonna continually going forward until we all the values are swapped at its corresponding right spot. Now, what do we do? We loop through this array and we start at the beginning index, zero to the end. And what do we do? If the current index is not equal to the index plus one. So if our current number one is not equal to one, right? Our current number one is not equal to one, we're gonna add it to it. If my current number two is not equal to two, we're gonna add it to it. Current number three is not equal to three, we're gonna add it to it. 
okay? So what this is doing is that when we put everything at the right spot, we're gonna have duplicates that are not in the right position. Those values that are not in the right position are gonna be the duplicates. So if they're not in the right spot, we add it to our new array of lists. And then we return it. So whatever value that is at, not at the right spot is gonna be a duplicate, then we return our array of duplicates. So I could go over an example very, very quickly. Let's go over an example using this idea. 43278231. So let's take this number and let's put this in our, let's put, let's put in paint. Okay, let's put in paint. Let's go over an example how this code will work. So I showed you how the code works, the pseudocode for it, but let's, let's go over an example. Okay, so let's go over the example of this. Okay, so we're gonna have this. 43278231. This four, right, we're gonna put it at, swap it at the right spot. So which is, what is that, uh, what should this four be at? Well, since all the values are indexed from, uh, are starting from one, right? So since, because it's based on this precondition, all the numbers are starting from range one to N, right? So this four is gonna be actually be at index three right? Because let's say, let's say we sorted all the values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Let's say we sorted all these values. This four, right? Since so because it started at one, this four is actually going to be at index three. Let's see, zero, one, two, three. So this number, what we're doing is we're going to actually swap it at the current value minus one, okay? So four is going to get swapped with index three. So what is that index three? Zero, one, two, three. Whatever value at seven, we're gonna swap it with the four. So what this is gonna end up happening is that we're gonna have, um, gonna hear, so this seven is gonna swap with four, so then we have three and two and four. And then the rest are gonna be the same, right? That's it, that's it. Okay, so that now, now this four is at the right spot, okay? So now we're at three. What is three? Three is not at the right spot. So we're gonna swap it with whatever is at the index two. So what is that index two? Zero, one, two. This two is at index two, so we're gonna swap three with two. So we're gonna swap it with that. So this is gonna seven, uh, two, wait, zero, one, two, uh, two, three, four, eight, two, three, one. Okay, so now this three is swapped with that uh, zero, three at the corresponding value of index two. So now we have Seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, one. Okay. What about this three? Three is at the right spot. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah. Four. Four, zero, one, two, three. Four is at index uh, four minus one. So yeah, this is this is at the right spot. Five. So is eight at the right spot of it? Well, first of all, is uh is eight equal to the our last number n? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is, so we're actually gonna ignore it. We're gonna ignore eight for now. Well, actually, let's see. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, we're gonna swap it with seven. This eight has to be at the end, right? So we're gonna swap it with whatever value at the seven. So we're gonna swap it this eight with this last value at seven. So this is gonna be uh, seven, two, three, four. Uh, so what, what is the last value at seven? One, so we're gonna swap it with one. So one, two, three, eight. Okay, so eight's at the right spot. Um, what about this one? One is not at the right spot, so we're gonna swap it with whatever value is at the first value here. So we're gonna swap it with there. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, then seven, right? Seven was at one, the spot run, so we're gonna swap it with this one. So this is gonna be one, seven, and two, three, eight. All right, what about this two? Two is not at the right spot, so we're gonna swap it with whatever is value at two. So we're gonna swap it with this three. So it's gonna be one, two, two, four, seven, two, uh, let's see, this three, wait, wait, let's see, hold up, uh, yeah, so this two gets swapped with this three, so that's gonna be uh, three, three, eight, okay? Okay, and then this three is gonna not at the right spot, so we're gonna swap it with four, right? So this three, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, okay, so this is here. Three is not a right spot. We're gonna swap it with four. So we're gonna zero, one, two, three. So we're, this this three is gonna swap with this four. Zero, one, two, three, four. Wait, wait hold up. Zero, one, two, uh, two, 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 three, two. Yeah, okay. So yeah, 
This three is gonna swap with this four way zero one two. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, no. This three is gonna get swapped with this two. What, what am I doing? One two three four seven three two eight. And this two is gonna get swapped with. Yeah. Okay. So after three, and then eight is at the right spot. Okay. So at at this point, all the values are in the right spot. Besides the ones that, that shouldn't be in it. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, seven, three, two, eight. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through this array, and then whichever, whichever value that is not at the corresponding right spot, that value is gonna be uh, duplicated. So let's see, um, I feel like I'm just missing something. Wait, no, we didn't finish this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this value should be duplicated. Um, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four. This should be a five, so that's not right. Six, seven, eight, so eight is right. Um, seven should be here, so this should be swapped with that, I think. So this three, four, two, three, seven, eight. Okay, okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four, two, three, seven, eight. These values should be at the right spot. So this is that at the right spot. Um, whichever value is not at the right spot is going to be our duplicate. So here, um, well, one is that right? Two is right. Three is right. Four is right. Five is not equal to two, so we're going to add two to our new array. Um, three is not at the right spot, so we're going to add three to our new array. Uh, so this is four, five, six. This is the right spot. Seven is the right spot. Eight is the right spot. In the end, we just return two, three. So yeah, that's the gist of how this code works. Keep sw uh, swapping it with at the right spot in the corresponding value in the array. And then in the end, whichever is not at the right spot, that'll be the duplicate number. So we return two, three. So yeah, that's how this code works. And let's go over another problem. Second problem, find all numbers disappeared in array. Given an array of numbers where numbers i is in the range one to n, return an array of all the integers that do not appear in numbers. All the numbers in the range one and that do not appear in numbers. So we have here four, three, two, seven, eight, two, three, one. Okay, five and six do not appear in this array. Between one and n, all these values are between one and n. Five and six are not appear in numbers. So what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna do nothing, right? I'm joking. <laughs> we're gonna return five and six. Okay, these values don't appear in here, so we return five and six. One, two. One, one. Two does not appear in this values between one and two. So we return two. Okay, so all these numbers that are not in the um, in the range one to n that do not appear in the array, uh, we gotta return the, the array of it. So let's just go over the solution really quick because um, all you need to do here is do the exact same thing of what we did before. So da, 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 right here. Um, Oh yeah, right here. Okay, so uh, we start from one to n. Here, uh, this is they do they do the differently here. They actually make it um, negative. They mark it as negative, which is also another thing you could do. You could mark it as negative. That's pretty good. So here uh, we have values of n right here. Okay, so n is the number of values. Result is what we're going to return. All right, so here we start i equals zero up to n i plus plus. This is in the index that we're going to swap it with. Okay? That's where we swap with. Nums at index is going to uh, equal to, so if this case is greater than zero, we're going to make it negative. Otherwise, we keep it as its right spot. So here in this situation, they didn't actually swap anything, which I think was kind of dumb, but instead they negate it, right? Whichever has right spot, they're going to negate it. So you could do it this way. Actually, it's, there's no there's no issue with it. I just think it's better to swap it to follow the same pattern. But yeah, here instead of swapping, they just made it negative. Okay, if it's greater than zero, we make it negative. If it's already less than zero, we keep it as itself. In the end, all the values that are greater than zero, they are missing. They're missing. So we're going to return. Uh, we add i plus one, the right, proper value the right corresponding value and then return it. So yeah, here, this is what they do. Um, they just like mark the negative, whatever, at the right spot negative. That's what they do. So here in A2, 
in the end we have eight two and then um because they're indexed uh in the right spot five and six five and six are not in this array and instead so they have eight and two so in the end they just return five and six because that's at the index of five and six but yeah that's what they do um yeah so that's this code and then let's go over last value and then we'll be on our way so here um we have a set of integers s and it contains all numbers from one end unfortunately some numbers got duplicated in another set which results in repetition one number and a loss of another number. Um, actually, one of the numbers got duplicated in another. So you're given numbers, uh, array of numbers, nums, and then we need to find the number that occurs twice and the number that is missing, or return in the array. So in this case, exa example one, one, two, two, four, two appears twice, and the number three is missing, so we return two and three. In this case, one appears twice, and the number two is missing in this array of nums between one to two, right? So we're gonna return one, two. So yeah, that's the gist of this, and let's just go directly to the uh, discussion of how to do this in this case. So um, the, in this case, uh, they didn't swap it. I don't, I, I don't know why, but it's the same technique though. Instead of what they're doing is they're gonna set it as negative one. Okay, so here, Duplicate is equal to minus one. They have a variable for that. Missing number is equal to minus one, which is just like a variable for that also. In the case, they're both negative one in the beginning because they're just random placeholders for now. We loop through from zero to n, and we get our current number. This current number is gonna be the index, and we make it the absolute value, okay? If, um, if it's less than zero, right? That means we already marked it as negative already. So this must be the duplicate number because in the problem it said that duplicate number is um, there's one duplicate number and we need to get that so that must be the duplicate number so yeah so if we already marked it as negative then we're gonna set it uh, the duplicate equal to the number okay um, otherwise we're just gonna mark it as negative so whichever at uh, the corresponding position num minus one we're gonna mark it as negative Okay, so, yeah, so basically what we're doing is we're looping through the array and at the corresponding right spot, we mark it as negative, okay? And then in the end, whichever, uh, if we already seen it as negative, right? The one that is negative if, that we've seen twice is gonna be the duplicate one, okay? So yeah, and then here, um, we're gonna loop through it again and whichever value is greater than zero, right? That means that it wasn't marked as negative. So that number must be missing. That is a number that's missing from our list, right? So, so basically whichever number is a marked duplicate, we, okay, so the first array is looping through it and it's gonna mark the corresponding index at the right spot to be negative, right? At those spots. If we already marked it twice, that's gonna be the duplicate number. Right. If if it's already negative, that then that num the duplicate number is going to be the current current number, right? Because that's we've seen twice. Because we're marking all the values to be negative. Now here is that if there's a number that wasn't marked that is already positive, then that's the missing number. Right. Because we're basically what we're doing is at, at the right spot. So let's say I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. Um. Let's say it was like one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, let's say there's a random number that's missing. Let's say like, I don't know, 18. 18 is missing. Okay. So since we're going through and we're marking at the right spot, if the current value that is not is uh, greater than zero, that means that we never marked it before. So that's the missing number. So we're going to set missing is equal to I plus one. Okay. The first loop is just going to loop through and mark all the values that are in the cor correct spot, in the right spot, is going to mark it um, as negative. If we've seen it twice, if it's already negative and we've seen it twice, that must be the duplicate. If we never marked it at all, that must be the missing number. So if we never marked it as negative, it's all positive zeros, that must be the missing number, so we break. In the end, we return the duplicate number and the missing number. That's the gist of this, this idea. You, we could actually um, go through an example 
how this would work. So you have one, two, two, three, four. So let's actually go over an example of how this would work and then we'll be on our way. So one, two, two, four, one, right? At index um, zero, we're gonna mark it as a minus one, right, at the right spot. So here, one is gonna, should be at index zero, so we're gonna mark this as a minus one, make it negative, okay? Two, right spot is gonna be at index one, which is at the right spot. We're gonna make it negative, minus two. Two, zero, one, two, right? This should be, at the right spot of minus two. Since this value is already negative, this two must be the duplicate number. So we're gonna mark it, duplicate is gonna be two. So our number, let's say our duplicate number is gonna equal to two because this is already negative, okay? Now four, is four marked, oh wait, four at the right spot, zero, one, two, three. Four is not at the right spot but we're gonna mark um, three as negative. So zero, one, two, three, three is gonna become negative. So here we're gonna have um, this is gonna become negative. So it's gonna be, man, I can't edit this. That sucks, okay. So here's, it'll be minus one, minus two, uh, two stays there. Four becomes negative, right spot uh, becomes minus four, okay. Now we loop through this again, whichever's greater than zero is gonna be, um, let's see, let's see, zero, zero, one, four, zero, one, two, three. It's gonna be negative. Okay, so whichever's greater than zero is gonna be the, uh, hold up, let me just go back really quick. Just making sure this is right. Oh yeah, whichever is greater than zero, that'll be the missing number. So I plus one would be the missing number. So in our case, here our missing number would actually be three. Because this number two is greater than zero, so this would become three, so our missing number is actually three. So zero, one, two, three, yeah. So this becomes um, missing number, two is greater than zero, the missing number would be three. So here, missing would equal to three. And yeah, then we return two and three. So yeah, that's the gist of this code. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later.